So, I've been sitting at this crime scene for 10 minutes. I dusted everything, sprayed everything, shone the light on everything, and examined everything. Could not find the thing I was looking for. <sighs> I looked at a guide for this one section of the game. It was right in front of me the whole time. Apparently, my pointer was outside of the, um, the area that I needed to trigger this next part. Uh. Wow, this is filthy. It appears to be a broken guitar. Case in point. It seems to stand out compared to the rest of this room. Now, I can continue. Little guy, are you a music aficionado at all? Uh, why? Well, I know bits and pieces. Hmm, maybe you might not know either. I need you to analyze this guitar. Um, this thing's pretty nasty. Holy... What's with you? It was in the victim's room. Stevens, that is. Then the, the neck was broken in the explosion? Probably, yes. So what? Son of a bitch. A raging bomber's gonna pay. Hey, calm down. What's wrong? Wait, I, I can't calm down. This guitar, it belonged to musical legend Ben Frank. Look, it's the 1955 Dagmite model. Oh, oh, I can't believe it. Uh, yeah, stuff like that is priceless, you know. I don't understand. Is that instrument valuable? It's beyond valuable. Finding this is, is a miracle. Normally I have it sent to the museum immediately for safekeeping, but... Oh, damn it. Uh... What? Does this get to you, Doctor? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, it's a broken guitar. Oh, you don't understand. Listen to me. If this was ever on the market, it would go for seventy to eighty thousand dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if bids went over a hundred grand. That's impressive. Ah, now it's personal, Dr. Kimishima. We have to put this bastard, I mean this killer, behind bars. Yes. Well, I agree. <sighs> In any event, a guitar worth more than a hundred thousand dollars. That's not the kind of thing an ordinary student would be able to afford. Perhaps I should have him look at it once he's calmed down a bit. Well, I'm glad we were able to start the episode with that. <laughs> that was good. Little guy, can I borrow you for a moment? Yes, of course. Do you need me to look at something? Can you take a close look at this guitar? Of course. I am a professional after all. I can be impartial. Please do, then. What can you tell me about it? There's not much I can say other than... Oh, wait a moment. Found something? Yes. It looks like this guitar was played by someone other than Ben Frank. Hmm, so what does that mean? Is the guitar a fake? No, of course not. The scratches, the wear, and everything says it's the real deal. But Ben Frank is right-handed. Oh. And this guitar has been said to be played by someone who's left-handed. The guitar is set for a left-handed player? The difference between right and left-handed guitars is... Yes, the string order is reversed, depending on the dominant hand. I'm surprised you knew that, Dr. Kimishima. When the thinner strings are on the right, it's for right-handed players. It's the opposite for left-handers. Hmm. The fourth victim owned this guitar. I doubt that he would lend his $100,000 guitar to anyone else. That makes it likely that Stephen Eldred was... Left-handed, right. That information could prove useful. Um, where was that? No. 
Ah, yeah. Maybe not. Okay, there's still something I have to do here, then. Think, think. These two may lead us to learn something new. The third victim, Aiden Posner, the callus on his palm is proof of his dominant arm. That would mean he was... Correct, he was right-handed. The fourth victim, Stephen Eldred, his guitar tells us which is his dominant hand. That would be his... Yes, the guitar had been strung for a left-handed player. The famous musician the guitar belonged to was right-handed. If anyone were to change the strings, it would be the current owner. Thus, we can reason that Stephen Eldred was himself left-handed. I wonder if this difference will be any help in this investigation. get closer to solving the mystery. Both the third and fourth victims had carbon dust on their fingers, but the locations of the dust are the major difference between them. On the other hand, we've learned about a difference between Aiden and Stephen. The two victims had different dominant hands. From these two facts, we can tell that the carbon dust was... on each victim's dominant hand. I think we've gotten a little closer to figuring out the meaning behind the carbon dust. Dr. Kimishima, we've found out more about that man. What man? Who are you talking about? Oh, uh, Michael Lang. He really does work for loan and taxes. So that is a real company. Is that his real name? Yes, though what he does is barely considered legal. Huh. If that's the case, is there the slightest chance that he's the bomb? I don't know about that. I'll send you the recording of his interrogation anyway. Please listen to it when you have time. Got it. Even if he isn't the culprit, he can at least tell us more about the victim. There's no reason to not listen to what he had to say. Alright, what do we have here? Why would the bomber target him at all? If 
we can figure out why, I think we'll see a great deal of progress in this case. There's more to it than that, though. The victim himself made some unanswered questions. According to Michael Lang, the man from the loan in taxes, Stephen was $100,000 in debt. The reason for that is... That's a likely possibility. The value and the amount he owes fit together. Still, how can an ordinary student get such a substantial loan? The reason must be because... why the loan shark accepted his means of repaying the debt. This led to Stephen being loaned the $100,000. The more we investigate, the cloudier the truth gets. Hello, Dr. Kirishima? Can you hear me? Mm hmm, I'm listening. What is it? I've asked for another recording from HQ. A recording of what? That revolutionary guy. Uh, I thought it might be of some use to us. I ordered a copy of the announcement he made before Aiden Posner was killed. I see. I'll check it out. something odd, huh?
I'm definitely hearing things. You know, I had this idea going in the back of my head, but uh, I, I don't know. I, th I thought it was too. I thought it was too easy. <laughs> mm, that's right. The fourth victim, Stephen Eldred. He was the revolutionary. Wow. This computer should be voice activated. It used to belong to the fourth victim who lived here. If that person really was the revolutionary. this far? Show yourself, raging bomber. Who are you? I'm sure you know who I am. Now, let's begin round two. Dance for me, Corpse Whisperer. Dr. Kimishima, where are you right now? He got me. The bomber's someone else. What? Uh, what do you mean? We've got to start the investigation over from scratch. Tell headquarters not to let their guard down. Uh, I knew it was too easy. Oh, I've been completely fooled. How could I let this happen? Come on, Naomi. It's me. Yes. Hello, Alyssa. What's wrong? You don't look happy. Did something happen? It's nothing. I'm all right. Really? Come on. I'm your friend. I gotta help you out. Thank you. You're a very kind little girl. 
Excuse me, can I bother you for a moment? Of course. How may I help you? I hope that package isn't for me. Do you know where I can drop a delivery for Dr. Kimishima? I'm Kimishima. I'll take it. Really? Perfect timing. Here's your package. Gabe? I wonder if it's the test results. Oh. Oh, can you sign here, please? This is pretty low tech. What happened to the digital pads? I'm sorry, mine's broken right now. Anyway, thanks. Did you get something? Who's it from? Yes, it's from a friend of mine. Wow! Look, look, Narumi! A fantastic teddy bear! It's so cute! That's right. But why would he send me this? Indeed. Good luck with your investigation. Oh, well, that's pretty harmless. What? No! No, 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 no! Oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't tell me. Where's the bear? Alyssa? Where's the bomb? Alyssa? The bomb's in the bear. No, 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 no. You've got to be kidding me!